Well, hello and welcome to the inaugural edition of the Spirit Insider brought to you by Hooters of Saginaw and Bay City. My name is Lee Cunningham and this week we will take a look at the Spirit's last three games. A victory against the Oshawa Generals and a couple of setbacks against the divisional rival Sarnia. We'll also catch up with second year forward Dylan Sadoy, Saginaw Spirit goaltender and Detroit signee Jake Patterson will also be part of the show. And we'll also talk to Kerry Hirschman from the Spirit office about some upcoming promotions involving the Saginaw Spirit. We'll take a quick break and we'll roll the highlight reel right after this. With Lori Amwell promoting the Great Lakes Bay region, we've had more away teams visitors stay in Saginaw than ever before. Ah! All you have to do is call 888 OHL Spirit, baby. We make it easy for you. The Saginaw Spirit began the work week with a Canadian Thanksgiving Monday encounter with one of the hottest teams in the league, the Oshawa Generals, who were winners of seven of their first nine games out of the gate. The two teams engaged in a defensive struggle dominated by the goaltending of Jake Patterson and Oshawa's Daniel Altshuler and solid penalty killing on both sides. The Spirit finally broke through with the first goal of the game late in the first as defenseman Brandon Prophet attempts a point shot that does not get through and that may have been a good thing as forward Dylan Sadaway was there to scoop up the stray puck and beat Alt Schuler for his third of the season. Justin Kia, along with Profit, assisted on the goal. The Generals got on the score sheet halfway through the second period as Michael Dal Cole, one of the top rated players for the next NHL draft, potted his sixth of the season, cutting in front of the net and beating Patterson. The third period and overtime solved nothing, so it was on to the shootout with the extra point in the game on the line. Spirit rookie forward Mitchell Stevens opened the scoring with a move to the outside, but Philadelphia first-round pick Scott Lawton countered with a goal for the Generals to knot things up in the shootout. From there, both Cody Payne of the Spirit and Del Cole of the Generals missed on their opportunities, setting up the game-winning heroics of Christoph Contos, who squeezed a shot past Altshuler, leaving the rest up to Patterson, who eventually stoned Oshawa's Bradley Latour to bank the extra point in a 2-1 Spirit victory. The Spirit then wrapped up a five-game road trip with the start of a home-and-home -home set with division rival Sarnia with Saginaw looking for at least one point in a seventh straight game. After a scoreless opening period, the two teams combined to record seven goals in the second. Sting rookie Nikita Karostalev broke the ice in the game with his first OHL goal with an assist going to top NHL prospect Anthony D'Angelo with that helper the start of what would be a four-point night. Then the Spirit rattled off three straight goals, starting with Christoph Contos' second of the season as he went short side on Sting goaltender Taylor Dupuy. It was then Zach Bertina's turn to contribute to the scoring for the Spirit as he found a seam between the pads of Dupuy for his third of the season. Mitchell Stevens then found the back of the net with a wicked wrist shot for his first of the season, and things look good for the Spirit up 3-1 in the second. Cue the comeback for Sarnia, who came up with a three-goal uprising of their own. D'Angelo took a goal mouth pass and jammed it home to beat Jake Patterson. And then it was last season's top scoring rookie in the OHL, Nikolai Goldobin's turn as he scores on a heavy wrist shot upstairs. A second goal by Karostalev in tight ended the scoring in a wild second period. And the Sting added a couple more in the third to seal the home ice victory 6-3. The Spirit and the Sting were back on the ice to wrap up the home-and-home -home encounter between the two West Division teams with Sarnia once again prevailing despite a 52-shot performance by the Spirit. Both first-period goals were recorded by the visitors, the first coming off the stick of veteran defenseman Craig Dunnick on a hard low shot from inside the point and the other a beautiful setup in front that found the stick of Nick Latta to stake Sarnia to the two-goal advantage. A surging Dylan Sadaway with his fourth of the season Trim the sting lead to a 2-1 in the second period of play. Just a great play by the second year forward while falling to the ice as he managed to chip the puck over the shoulder of Taylor Dupuy. Sarnia would then build up a 5-1 lead before Christoph Contos capped off a productive week personally with his third and fourth goals of the season late in the game. Contos' first of the night was the result of a tremendous effort while falling as he snuck a backhander high over a sprawling Dupuy and the second goal, a last second of the game effort on a good feed by Terry Trafford. That would do it for the game and the week as the Sarnia Sting took the game by a score of 5-3 to three 
and the Spirit will now prepare for a skate against the Barry Colts on October 26th in the annual Pink Out Breast Cancer Awareness Game. And that is the week that was for the Saginaw Spirit, and we'll take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll talk with Dylan Sadaway of the Spirit. When the unexpected happens, whether it's a fender bender or a major collision, that's okay. Take it to Garber. The Garber Collision Center expertly repairs all makes and models and works with all major insurance companies. Garber backs their work with a lifetime warranty. From simple windshield repair to major collision, you have a choice. Take it to the Garber Collision Center. Everybody knows you'll do better at Garber. Everybody knows you'll do better at Garber. Everything's gonna be fine. I know. I just worry. I'm sure middle school is going to be no big deal. I hope so. From pencils to notebooks, backpacks to fashion, get everything for back to school at low Meyer prices. Even something for your favorite teacher. You'll do great, Mom. Meyer makes back to school even better. And welcome back to the Spirit Insider. My name is Lee Cunningham, and as promised, let's have a conversation with Dylan Sadaway, the fine second-year forward for the Spirit. Dylan, you've always been an energy guy in your OHL career, albeit uh, just a one full season in the Ontario Hockey League. But, you know, uh, your enthusiasm on the ice has translated to some confidence in terms of scoring some goals, up to four on the season, and uh, that's got to make you feel good. You make contributions in a lot of different ways, and now offensively it's starting to come around for you. Yeah, no, I just try to do the best I can. Last year I only had two goals. This year I'm already up to four and we're already only 13 games into the season. So hopefully I can keep getting on a roll and keep contributing. Well, you go to the net and, and your goal the other night against the Sarnia Sting was case in point of the importance of going to the net with some determination. Uh, you were very assertive on the play, scored a beautiful goal in that game. And again, it was a byproduct of you uh, setting up in front of the net and kind of paying the price for the goal. Yeah, no, just, just go to the net and just be a hassle to the defenseman, get in front of the goalie's face, and hopefully get some garbage goals. Of course, this is your second season in the Ontario Hockey League. Uh, the big difference between last year and this year in your eyes, obviously you had an off-season to train and, you know, sort of uh, digest the first season in the OHL, and, and it's a big deal. You 68 games, a lot of travel, and all that kind of thing. But what are the big differences that you see this time around? Mainly just the confidence, being a second-year guy. You've been here for a year. You kind of know what the role is, what the routines are, and just, just getting the confidence to go out and just play your game and have fun. Was there a player as a rookie on the Saginaw Spirit that you kind of looked up to, somebody that uh, was a bit of a mentor for you, or was it a number of guys that kind of hel helped you through the first season? You know what, when uh, Vince Trocek was here the first half of the season, I kind of looked up to him, and he was a great playmaker, great goal scorer, and was just an all-around great player, and I was looking up to him, and then when he left, it was uh, Eric Locke, mm -hmm. just always hard work and giving 110% every single shift, and yeah. What is the key in your eyes to being a good defensive forward? Just doing the small things, getting pucks out, blocking shots, and just doing all the small things. Uh, that's one thing this uh, Saginaw Spirit Hockey Club does very, very well, and uh, we'll talk to Jake Patterson a little bit later, and he'll attest to it, I'm sure, but blocking shots. There's a technique to it. Uh, there's a willingness involved, obviously. It's not the most glamorous part of uh, an on-ice assignment, but uh, what are the techniques that you use and your teammates use in order to uh, block shots effectively? Just get in front of their, get in the shooting lane. Jake Ringette blocks probably five, six shots a <laughs> yes, game. Yes, he does. And those, those aren't nice. They hurt sometimes, but it's just willingness to pay the price and do what you can to, for the team. Now, your dad was a player. Uh, he played uh, in the Toronto Marlboro system, if I'm not mistaken. I remember talking to Mike Feuda, the head amateur scout with the LA Kings, about uh, his time with your dad, Al. Uh, what did you learn from your father about the game of hockey, and uh, what did he tell you about his days in this league? Yeah, I know he played. He played for the Marlies. Also played for uh, Sudbury Wolves, and just he coached me and just taught me, just give 110 percent and have fun all the time. Just go out there and play your game. Well, that's it. And, and having fun is such a big element in the game of hockey. And you know, it's such a long, long season. So there are going to be some peaks and valleys and whatnot. But you know, you guys have gotten a fair bit of travel out of the way, and I think that helps early in the season to get some of those road games uh, away from the schedule, get a little camaraderie on the road and that kind of thing. Yeah, I know getting the road games done early in the year is nice because you get the, the Ottawa trips and the, or the Sault Ste. Marie trips in the Christmas time or February time. They, 
goes from a four hour trip to about a six hour, seven hour trip, depending on the snow and the weather. So getting those out of the uh, way early in the year is real nice. How about uh, the team so far this year? Uh, you know, you know it's, it's been a little bit up and down, but you've got a lot of new faces and guys that are trying to sort of coordinate their talents with one another. But, you know, certainly the talent base is there, but uh, maybe assess the season so far. You know, it's been, it's been a good season so far. That's all I can say. We've had, we have a great guys, great group of guys, a lot of young players as well. So just getting guys used to playing a system, getting into what uh, Coach Gilbert wants us to play. Talk about the fact that this is your NHL draft year. Uh, obviously, you know for a fact that there's going to be scouts uh, at every rink and whatnot. And but it, it's a case where you just can't let it phase you. You've just got to essentially, as they say, it's cliche, but play your game. But you know, what are your thoughts going into the draft process? Obviously, the uh, NHL selection process coming up in Philadelphia. Just I kind of put it in the back of my mind. Know it's there. It's upcoming. But just go out there and play my game every single shift, every single game, and hopefully my game will get noticed. Uh, would you, you know, I, I, do you take it uh, you know, personally or anything like that, both from a positive and a negative standpoint when, uh, you know, the uh, central scouting ratings come out, uh, you know, you weren't on the first one, but I got to th think that you're going to be on the second one. Yeah, no, I do take it personally. It just shows me that I need to do more to get on their rating lists and just shows me, like, I'm not there right now, but that gives me a goal to be at where, where I want to be. One of your closest friends in the game of hockey, Michael Del Cole, a player who will be drafted without question coming up in Philadelphia, one of the best young players in the Ontario Hockey League. Talk about that relationship with him and uh, how far it goes back. Yeah, no, me and uh, Del Cole went back a long ways. I uh, went to preschool with him, JKSK, and all the way up through uh, grade one to eight and first uh, grade nine high school. So I, our families are real close and Grew up with him, spent the summers with him, working out, playing hockey, and just having fun. Well, Dylan, congratulations on a great start to the season. Continued success, and we'll talk to you again. All right, thank you. And we appreciate the thoughts of Dylan Sadaway. We'll take another commercial break, and we'll come back with Jake Patterson of the Saginaw Spirit right after this. You've decided on a new Chevy. That's a great choice. So what can you do to make that choice even better? See Garber Chevrolet. Don't buy till you learn why you'll do better at Garber Chevy. We'll beat any payment, any price. Bring us your deal and let us show you. Buy with confidence. Our better trade-in values means a better down payment and a lower payment. So as you see and hear ads for really low payments elsewhere, remember, don't buy till you learn why. You'll do better at Garber Chevrolet. The Getaway. It's the place we go when every day is all too ordinary. And then finally you let yourself have it all. Here they use words like luxury, and you soak it up and indulge. You reel yourself in, then you let yourself go. And with a vivid surge of adrenaline, you feel alive. Let yourself get away. Experience more at Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort. And welcome back to the Spirit Insider, and as promised, a conversation with one of the Really, really impressive goaltenders around the Canadian Hockey League. Saginaw Spirit goaltender Jake Patterson, and of course, now a signed prospect with the Detroit Red Wings. Jake, once again, you've been one of the workhorses around the OHL in goal, uh, one of the top uh, players in terms of uh, saves at your position. Uh, talk about the season to start. You've been a busy guy and uh, a lot of road games to start for the hockey club as well, so you get some of those out of the way, but your assessment so far? Um, yeah, I think it's been a pretty good year so far. Uh, obviously, we've had a lot of road games. You know, to start off the season, which I think is uh, obviously a good thing, is you know getting to know your teammates is obviously important. So it's nice to be on the road together. And as far as the hockey goes, you know, I think we had a bit of a slow start, but uh, definitely coming along. And I think uh, besides the two two starting games, yeah. you know, our, our two road trips before that went pretty well, and uh, definitely a, you know pretty good start I think to the season. Well, a way to turn the corner, obviously, when you've got 12 points on the line, you're able to get 10 of them. And you know, the two Sarnia games aside, I, I think this hockey club is showing some signs. And you make a good point when you say, you know, there's a lot of new faces in there, either via trade or with a couple of rookie defensemen that have come in, Mitchell Stevens, obviously. So it, it'll take some time for guys to gel and uh, get to know one of each other, uh, both on and off the ice. Yeah, definitely. You know, obviously, uh, you know, we got a couple new faces, like you said. You know, we, we brought in a couple guys through trade during the summer, and then, obviously, you know, the 16-year-olds. So, you know, they're trying to, you know, learn the system. You know, with uh, with Greg Gilbert, who obviously is a great coach. So, uh, he's obviously teaching them the right things, and it's going to take a bit of time to, you know, get to know the system. But I think it's uh, definitely a work in progress, but it's coming along. And the, you know, besides the Serena games, definitely. Uh, kind of proven that you know the guys are learning the system. 
One of the things that the Saginaw Spirit do very, very well as a team is block shots. Uh, yeah, Jake Ringette might be the pollster yeah. boy for uh, blocking shots around the OHL. Justin Sefton, Nathan Glass had a couple of key blocks in recent games. How important is that to you as a goaltender? And you really got to tip your hat to the guys in front of you because you know it's not exactly a fun thing to do on the ice. Yeah, definitely. You know, I think uh, obviously Ringer is probably one of the best <laughs> shot blockers on the team, and it feels like. You know, every period we're coming into the room, and I'm always telling them, you know, nice shot blocks out there. It's almost almost every period. So obviously, it's it's an important part of the game. It's obviously not pretty, but uh, yeah. I think there's some defensemen on our team that are, you know, starting to get pretty good at it. Yeah, well, I, I'm glad that you're able to uh, thank him for his efforts because uh, I know that goes a long way when a goalie can sort of say to a defenseman, "I appreciate what you're doing on the defensive side of the puck." Uh, you know, you're, you're one of the elite goaltenders in the Canadian Hockey League. Uh, there's no two ways about that. Uh, what are your thoughts about the uh, Canadian Junior Team again? You were with the uh, program last year as the third goaltender. What did you learn from that experience that you'd like to take into the next camp coming up in December, hopefully to cement a spot as maybe the number one goaltender with your country? Yeah, I mean, as far as the World Juniors are concerned, you know, I can't really focus on it too much. Obviously, uh, you know, it's coming up, but... Uh, you know, just being on the team last year, it doesn't prove anything. Obviously, you know, a lot can change. You know, it's 12 months since the last tournament. So, uh, you know, obviously I'm trying to do my best to, you know, get noticed and get on the team. And as far as, you know, being there last year, I think the biggest thing I learned was, uh, you know, just how hard it is to actually win that tournament. You mm -hmm. know, you know, the one game elimination, uh, you know, it makes it tough to win. So it's uh, that's probably the biggest thing I learned. And hopefully I'll... Uh, you know, get the opportunity to be back this year and, uh, you know, hopefully have a good finish. Have you had any correspondence with Hockey Canada? Obviously, you'd be on their radar as a returning player. Uh, is there, you know, interacting with Hockey Canada from time to time if you bump into one of their scouts or personnel on the road? Um, not so far. I know, I know they've been to a couple games, you know, f from what I've heard, but I haven't talked to anybody, uh, you know, as far as after a game or anything. So I know they're there, but I haven't talked to anybody yet. Take us through the experience of signing with an NHL team. Uh, I, I remember it, 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 it kind of was a bit of a whirlwind. It kind of happened the day of a home game, so everyone was scrambling a little yeah. bit. But uh, take us through the process and what led into it. Obviously, your agent had something to do with the negotiations with the Detroit Red Wings. But when you finally put pen to paper, what was the feeling? Obviously, you know, just, just a lot of excitement. You know, uh, when, you, when you can finally get it finalized, you know, to sign, sign the paper is obviously something that, you know, I've been looking forward to my entire life. So it's... Uh, you know, it's really exciting, and yeah, like you said, it's a bit of a whirlwind. You know, I know, uh, I know that my agent was talking to them, and uh, I was kind of expecting a little bit longer of a nego negotiation period, but it kind of happened pretty quickly. And obviously, uh, you know, I was pretty happy about that. Yeah, is, is it easier on you knowing full well that that is in the bank, and you can just focus on the season or whatnot instead of having to wait until maybe the off season leading up to June? Uh, I think so. I mean, e either way, there's nothing you can really do. You kind of just gotta you know, focus on hockey and play your game, but just to get it done and get it out of the way, obviously, is, you know, it's, it's something that, that I was happy, happy to get done early in the season, and like I said, I'm really excited and, you know, looking forward to the future. You have a relationship with Chris Osgood. You work very closely with Terry Barbeau. Uh, talk about their different styles when it comes to uh, trying to mold you into the goaltender that uh, you envisioned in becoming uh, as a pro with the Red Wings. Yeah, obviously, you know, I'm pretty fortunate when you say, you know, the likes of, you know, obviously well, Jim Bedard as well, the yeah, goalie sure. coach for yeah. Detroit, yeah. and then, Osgood and then you know Terry Barbeau are you know obviously three three great uh, goaltending coaches so I'm pretty fortunate to have them all on my side and as far as their their teaching techniques you know they're all you know pretty similar not really trying to trying to change my game too much so it's just great to have them on my side and looking forward to you know the next couple of years. You were able to go up to the Traverse City Red Wings prospect uh, tournament uh, a few weeks ago had a great tournament couple wins uh, the goals against average was uh, very very tidy and you were pretty stingy up there. Uh, what what did you uh, see up there? How was the experience? And how would a game played up there compared to one in the OHL? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, it was a good experience to be up there for sure. And, you know, I was obviously fortunate. We had a pretty good team up there. So, won uh, it for the first time? Yeah, won it for the first time, which was exciting. And I know uh, the fans up there were kind of, you know, Red Wing, uh, Red Wing fans in Traverse City because we sure. were doing our training camps up there. So they were, they were happy to see us, you know, take home the trophy. And, as far as the games went, you know, obviously it, it's similar to the OHL, but it's obviously, you know, a step above. Like everything's a lot, a lot cleaner. Everything happens, you know, a lot quicker too. So it was a bit of an adjustment period. But, you know, when, when, when guys are at that level, you know, the defense is obviously a lot better. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier on myself. A little strange looking over and seeing Justin Kia and Eric Locke with Buffalo or Nick Moutry or Justin Sefton with Columbus, uh, yeah. knowing full well that you're going to be playing with these guys in a few weeks. But, you know, they're adversaries for a few games up there. Yeah, it was interesting just to see, you know, obviously a lot of the guys that tournament you know from playing with and against and, you know, growing up playing minor hockey with. So it was exciting to, 
to be in that tournament. And it was also exciting to see you know good friends on other teams competing. Jay, great to see you again. Continued success, and we'll do this again before the season's out. All right, sounds good. Thank All you. Right. Well, we appreciate the thoughts of Jake Patterson. We're going to take another break, but when we come back, I'll have a conversation with one of my colleagues with the Saginaw Spirit, Kerry Hirschman, who's going to get us up to date on a number of great promotions involving the Spirit in the coming days. The Bears are going to have a really strong offense this year. But the Lions are poised for a comeback. Really? Hey, Dad. Hey, guys. I can't tie my shoe. Poised for a comeback. Big time. With fresh party trays, meats, and salads prepared daily, Meyer makes tailgating so good, you never know who's going to show up. Awesome tailgate. From Meyer, right? From the pros to the peewees, Meyer makes tailgating even better. You've decided on a new Chevy. That's a great choice. So what can you do to make that choice even better? See Garber Chevrolet. Don't buy till you learn why you'll do better at Garber Chevy. We'll beat any payment, any price. Bring us your deal and let us show you. Buy with confidence. Our better trade-in values means a better down payment and a lower payment. So as you see and hear ads for really low payments elsewhere, remember, don't buy till you learn why. You'll do better at Garber Chevrolet. And welcome back to the Spirit Insider. And as promised, my conversation with my colleague with the Saginaw Spirit, Kerry Hirschman, who will give us an update on some great upcoming promotions involving the team. Kerry, just one game this week for the Saginaw Spirit. It is on home ice, and of course, it's one of the marquee events on the calendar for the Spirit. Yes, it is. It's actually the Pink Out Breast Cancer Awareness game. Um, we'll have the Hockey Angels on hand for us at 5 before our game, and then we will have um, honoring 42 survivors mm -hmm. for the game uh, right before puck drop. So it should be a really great event. Um, fundraising tickets are still on sale. They're $12 with $5 going back to the St. Mary's Breast Care Fund. And of so. course, uh, St. Mary's in Michigan and Consumers Energy, a big part Being of the huge presentation. Huge partners, yes, absolutely. And our good friend Art Lewis will preside over an auction at the end of the game as well against the Barry Colts. And uh, he'll do his thing and try and, again, raise some money for the cause uh, via those uh, jerseys that will be worn absolutely. by the Spirit. Absolutely, yes. And then uh, coming up on Wednesday, the Rivalry Wednesdays, the as rivalry we like to be Wednesday. calling it. And uh, what's going on that yes, night? Yes, that night we'll have, again, dollar beers, dollar pizza, and then dollar Pepsi as well. So and and that course. will run until 7.30. And that's October 30th against Plymouth. October 30th, yes. And then uh, the Saginaw Spirit will be home for the next two games as well, following those two home games. Uh, the 1st of November, the 2nd of November against Owen Sound, and then something special coming up on the 2nd against Sault Ste. Marie. Yes, November 2nd is going to be Military Appreciation Night. So all of our um, past veterans and um, active duty military mm -hmm. will get free complimentary tickets um, for the game and then 950 tickets for their family and friends. So it should be a pretty awesome night too. And of course the Saginaw Spirit uh, have so many ticketing options and various group plans and whatnot. So uh, basically uh, SaginawSpirit.com. Uh, the phone yes. number, uh, you're a click or two away from getting a lot of different options for you. Absolutely, and they can even stop in the office and ask for, for Carrie or Shane, and we'll help you out with ticket any kind of ticketing options. Carrie, we appreciate the update. We'll talk to you again in a couple weeks. Thank you. Well, that will close the door on the first edition of the Saginaw Spirit Insider. My name is Lee Cunningham, and of course, we would like to thank our sponsor, Hooters of Saginaw and Bay City, and tune in in a couple of weeks' time, early November, for another edition. And until then, keep supporting the Spirit, and we'll see you at the Dow Event Center. <laughs>